Hi guys, it's Amanda from chemwithamanda.com and today I would like to show you four simple experiments that you can do at home today with your kids. There are no special materials required for any of these experiments, so let's get started. So this semester we are doing an introduction to earth science and one of the first things that I talked to my girls about was the fact that a large portion of the earth's surface is covered in water, which is unique to our planet. And so I wanted to come up with some simple experiments to do to show some of the unique characteristics of water. And the first experiment that I came up with to do with my girls was simply to build a model of a water molecule. Um, we used Play-Doh and toothpicks Another really fun way to do this is with marshmallows and toothpicks. Um, sometimes food is very motivating for younger kids. Uh, but anyhow, we used Play-Doh and toothpicks. And two key points that you want to get across when you do this experiment with your kids. One, water is made up of two hydrogen and one oxygen, hence the formula H2O. I don't think it's ever too early to introduce your kids to that chemical formula. The second point that you want to get across to your kids is that water molecules have a bent shape. So don't build your molecule with everything in a line. Water molecules have a bent shape or a bent geometry. And it's that bent geometry that has a really big impact on the behavior of water because the oxygen atom actually has more of the electron density, giving this half of the molecule a partial negative charge, leaving the hydrogen atoms, or we'll say this half of the molecule, with a partial positive charge. When a molecule has uneven charge distribution like that, we say the molecule is polar. Water molecules are polar. And it's this polarity that leads to a stronger force of attraction between water molecules. And that leads to some of the unique characteristics of water, such as its high boiling point and its strong surface tension. And we're actually going to see the polarity of water in our next experiment. Experiment two, bending water. All you need for this experiment is a cheap plastic comb, but if you don't have a cheap plastic comb, a balloon works wonderfully as well. And all you're gonna do is turn on your faucet to a trickle. And take your comb and hold it about a fourth of an inch away from the trickle in water. Nothing should happen. Now you're gonna comb your hair, or if you're using a balloon, just rub your balloon against your hair to build up some charge. So what you're doing is you're stripping the electrons from your hair, moving them to the plastic comb. So you're building up a negative charge on the comb. And when you bring that back towards the water, you will see a bending. Hopefully you can see that on the video there. You will see a bending of the water. The stream of water is actually bending towards that negatively charged comb. You don't want to touch the water with the comb. You want to just bring it about a fourth of an inch away and see that bending of the water. The bending is that polar, is the polar water molecules being attracted to the negatively charged comb. Remember that the hydrogens have a partial positive charge and they are gonna be attracted to the negatively charged combs. And that is why you're going to see the bending of the stream of water. Experiment number three, exploring surface tension. All you need for this experiment is a penny, and I happen to have a transfer pipette, but a medicine dropper will work just fine. So the first thing you wanna do with this experiment is ask your kids how many drops of water will fit on this penny. My daughters gave the answer three, and 10. Turns out we got a lot more than that. 
on our penny. And that's due to water's strong surface tension, which relates back to what we talked about in experiment number one, the strong attractive forces between the polar water molecules. That creates a very strong surface tension, an inward pull on the outermost molecules. So let's give this a try. One, two, three, four, five. There's 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 31, broke the surface tension. Um, so if you want to go a little further with this experiment, go ahead and try this with rubbing alcohol, which is 70% isopropyl alcohol, 30% water, but it has a much a lower, well, not much lower, but a lower surface tension than water. And so you'll see that you won't be able to get quite as many droplets on there before the surface tension is broken. Experiment for breaking the surface tension. Now a paper clip would normally sink in a bowl of water, but if you are ever so careful, you can get it to float on top of the water by not breaking the surface tension. Might take you a few tries. Okay, uh, so this is the same thing that allows little strider bugs to skim across the surface of a pond. Now what we're going to do is we're going to break the surface tension, causing the paper clip to drop suddenly to the bottom of the bowl. And we're going to do this by adding a little bit of dish soap. Soap and detergents have both a polar and a nonpolar region, and the polar region of a soap molecule will interact with the polar water molecules, thus breaking apart the surface tension. And that concludes our four super simple science experiments that you can do today with your kids, no special equipment needed.